The iPhone 11 Pro has triple rear cameras, night mode, and a brand new selfie camera. But how much better is it at taking photos and videos than last year's iPhone XS? Let's find out. Now this isn't your regular camera shootout, largely because the iPhone 11 Pro has features that are, well, just not found on the iPhone XS. The first thing you'll notice when you pick up the iPhone 11 Pro is that there are three cameras on the back, instead of the two cameras found on the iPhone XS. The newest camera is an ultra-wide 13mm lens equivalent and, ah, oh, it's just a damn blast to use. Now, if the regular wide-angle camera on the iPhone is like a business suit and the telephoto lens is kind of like a sports blazer, then the ultra-wide lens is the equivalent of a Hawaiian shirt. It's obviously different from the other cameras, and it will definitely change the way you shoot. Now, this won't be your go-to everyday lens, but it can be both handy for small spaces as well as, well, make you feel a little artistic, kind of changing the drama of a mundane scene. Apple did a great job at balancing the distortion on the lens. There's a little which you want because, well, it's an ultra-wide lens, but it's not horrible. I found myself finding different lines and angles to make my subjects look larger than life. And best of all, you can use the ultra-wide angle to film video. I mean, just here, take a look at these spinning trees. In fact, during recording, you can switch lenses. Seriously, try zooming in with a two times telephoto lens and then tapping the 0.5 ultra wide button and it just zooms you right back out. Pretty amazing. I, I should mention that you're gonna have to find a place for your fingers when you're using the ultra wide camera. Several times my fingers made cameos on the edges and sides of my photos. So you don't wanna do that. Obviously, the iPhone XS does not have an ultra-wide camera, so there's really nothing to compare it to the other phone. And to be honest, if the only update this year was the addition of an ultra-wide camera, I don't think it would be worth upgrading from an iPhone XS to an iPhone 11 Pro. And that brings me to my second favorite feature on the iPhone 11 Pro, night mode. Now, as strong as the iPhone has been in photography and shooting videos over the years, one weakness has always been low light photography. So if I was out with friends at a bar, it was nice and cozy, dim lighting, and I went to take a photo, the iPhone's noise reduction would help a photo as much as it would hurt it. Photos I took from the iPhone XS would sometimes look almost like a painting, especially if I cropped in. But night mode changes everything. It can brighten photos, reduce image noise, and best of all, it does it all automatically. The way it works is when you open up the default camera app, the iPhone will determine if it's dark enough to go into night mode. At this time, there's not a manual way to trigger the mode. Night mode uses adaptive bracketing and takes a series of photos, some with longer shutter speeds and others with shorter ones. The iPhone 11 Pro then fuses all the photos together to reduce motion blur and brighten shadows. When I handheld the iPhone for night mode shots, the sequence would take about three to five seconds. When I put the iPhone on a tripod, I got a 10 second time and I was even able to override that manually for a 28 second night mode shot. I took photos of a tree in my backyard that was in complete darkness. Now, here's the one I took with the iPhone XS, which does not have night mode. And here's the one from the iPhone 11 Pro with night mode. <laughs> oh yeah, and the, uh, the lines you see in the bottom right, yeah, that was when an airplane flew over during the capture process. While the iPhone is taking photos in night mode, the viewfinder dims and slowly brightens as the capture sequence goes on. The final photo always looks better than the live preview. Now, as exciting as night mode or the ultra-wide camera is, the biggest change to the iPhone 11 Pro's camera is also one of the most subtle. The iPhone XS uses smart HDR to make photos look better. However, in a lot of situations, colors and white balance were not accurate. Loose guys would just look off and sometimes smart HDR reduced the contrast so much that images looked flat. The iPhone 11 Pro has a new version which seems less aggressive. Notice the difference in the yellow paint on the Jeep. The photo from the XS reduces the highlights on the truck and makes the yellow paint look almost like a matte finish. In this photo of the donut, you can see how the iPhone XS image looks, well, a little flat. The 11 Pro has a bit more pop. Now notice the natural bokeh of each of the lenses on the wide angle cameras. 
The Boca with the blurred out background on the 11 Pro is buttery and smooth, while on the 10s it's a bit more crunchy. Another change on the 11 Pro is the telephoto camera. Its 52 millimeter equivalent lens now has an f-stop of f2, which lets in a little bit more light. This compared to the 52 millimeter equivalent f2.4 camera on the iPhone 10s. Like the changes to Smart HDR, these are not always the most obvious. Notice the shadows in the picture from the iPhone XS and how they are darker than those on the 11 Pro. Next, look at the colors of the sky. The Smart HDR on the XS makes the sky this weird shade of blue, while the Smart HDR on the iPhone 11 Pro renders the sky more true to life. In terms of portrait mode on both iPhones, they're about equal. Portrait mode photos from the iPhone XS seem to pull off the cutout and edge blending better than the iPhone 11 Pro. But a new feature that I'm enamored about is called High Key Mono, which simulates a black and white studio photo taken against a white background. What's crazy is you'd never know I was in my living room when I took these photos. Video from the iPhone 11 Pro doesn't look drastically different than that from the iPhone XS. If anything, the colors are a little less punchy and more true to life. And I like that. However, the iPhone XS introduced extended dynamic range, which helped keep highlights from blowing out to white and shadows from turning black. It worked on all resolutions and frame rates except 4K 60 frames per second. The iPhone 11 Pro now includes extended dynamic range for 4K 60 frames per second. I shot videos at that frame rate and resolution from both phones on a sunny day. In the video from the iPhone XS, the sun is blown out to white and there's basically a large white blob where the sun would be. The iPhone 11 Pro's video handled the sun much better. And like photos, my favorite new thing is that you can shoot videos with that ultra wide lens. Movements become much more dramatic when you pan across a bunch of trees in the Presidio. The iPhone XS had the best video capture on any phone, and the iPhone 11 Pro just refines that further. And then there's the selfie camera. The iPhone 11 Pro marks the first time that all the cameras on the front and back are at the same level. They all have 12 megapixel sensors and can record 4K video and slow motion. Check out the selfies I took. The one from the iPhone 11 Pro has better colors that are more true to life, while the one from the iPhone XS looks a bit dull. Selfie videos are improved too. Video from the iPhone 11 Pro selfie camera is sharper with better colors than the iPhone XS. And yes, I did try the horribly named feature, Slow Fees. Okay, they were fun, but I can't imagine actually using this feature ever again, unless I was like a 12 year old. At the end of the day, I really enjoyed the iPhone 11 Pro's ultra wide camera, but it's actually the small improvements to Smart HDR, the new selfie camera and night mode that I think make this the best camera system ever on an iPhone. Now, if you already have an iPhone XS and you're really into photos and videos, I do think you should consider upgrading to the iPhone 11 Pro.